All right, good afternoon, I'm Wayne Chase. Today we're gonna to be doing a little COPD education. We're gonna be discussing prevention of COPD readmissions and providing quality hospital care. Now, as you guys all know, admissions for exasperations account for the majority of costs associated with COPD. And after discharge, 10 to 20% of COPD patients are readmitted within the first 30 days. Those aren't necessarily Baycare numbers because I don't have access to those, those are general numbers. Now, patients who are readmitted following a COPD hospitalization are at a greater risk of mortality and have worse outcomes relative to patients who are not readmitted. So today we're going to be talking about a new plan that's rolling out on the 21st and we have COPD folders. All patients who have COPD or a history of COPD as a primary diagnosis will have a blue folder with their patient chart. They'll be placed with the patient chart at the time of admission. Now here on this floor we've got them right above the patient charts and I'm sure the charge nurse or the nurse manager will find a good spot on your floor for them. They're working currently with uh, several different teams to find a way to pull up a uh, query of patients of daily who have COPD. Now we're going to talk about the contents of the folder. Inside the folder we have a COPD checklist. That's for nursing and for case management. On the front side is blue. On the back side is your case management side. That's your orange side. Okay, then we have the pneumonia vaccine information sheet. We've got this printed out for you so you don't have to go digging for it and printing it out. Then we have the ARNP connection screening tools. What this is is a checklist and if the patient meets any of these requirements, we can give them a referral to Daphne. And then we also have a physician's COPD rescue, chit, uh, rescue kit checklist. We're gonna talk about each one of these shoulder, shortly. All right, so talking about the COPD checklist, you notice that it's gonna have holes punched on each side of it. That's so it can be placed in the folder. As soon as you open it up, you see this checklist, you have the patient information on the opposite side. Now we're gonna discuss this checklist daily during the MDR rounds and initiate the zero one to items as soon as the patient's admitted. On here we have the COPD power plan utilized by the authorizing physician and the COPD, COPD education ordered upon admission. Then you have the COPD zone tool at the bedside. Now the zone tool is going to be brought up by respiratory therapy. It's going to be reviewed by them and you're going to be actually reinforcing that education daily. Okay, then we're going to, uh, the blue side is your nursing responsibility and you need to collaborate and delegate to appropriate parties. The orange side obviously is your clinic or your case management and your social worker, but this side also can't be overlooked because we've got items on here do they have the referral to the ARNP home connections? And do they have the necessary equipment at home that they need? Do they have the nebulizers? Do they have their oxygen? Do they have the tank by the bedside? And does everything work as advertised? Does the patient have the ability to pay for those medications? And obviously, if they don't have the ability to pay, that they can receive 30 days of medication. Also, the, uh, it does discuss that they will reinforce the under understanding of the zone tool. That's gone over several times in this because that's really important for the, the client. Now, we do need to collaborate with uh, case management during tabletop MDR to ensure that the, the case management portion of the checklist is completed on the back side of the form. Now, we're going to discuss the day zero to day one admissions. Okay, so we need to uh, continue the current process for COPD education, that's really important. Once the order is placed, respiratory therapy will bring up the zone tool. Okay, now this needs to be placed above the patient's bedside or at the patient's bedside, so it can be discussed by respiratory therapy and by the nurse and on rounds. Um, pulmonary rehab um, could be completed and we actually have a referral sheet if it's done off-site that's in your kit. And if administering the uh, pneumonia vaccine or the influenza vaccine, it is flu season, we do again have the vaccine information sheet located in there, so you don't have to go digging for that. All right, now we're gonna be talking about prior to discharge. So since we're discussing, or since we're now conducting tabletop MDR rounds, interview the patients prior to a rounds to assess medication needs, because COPD medication needs to be clarified through pharmacy. So when you're looking at this, you have prior to discharge. Review the zone tool daily and reinforce that education. 
Is the patient going home with home health care? You need to collaborate with the home health care coordinator to see if the patient meets the or qualifications for the COPD rescue kit. The rescue kit might be phased out, but right now it's still active, and that form for the rescue kit is in here. Okay, we also need to consider the, the possibility for palliative care consult. And we need to consider a frailty assessment by physical therapy, and we'll discuss that here in just a second. We also, again, need to discuss the need for home oxygen therapy and really take a look at the medication during rounds. Ask the patient if they need medication refills. Ask the patient if they'd like to use the meds to bed program. That's the program where Publix will actually come to your house and drop those off. And can the patient afford the medications? Um, we also have uh, collaborate with uh, collaborate with CM for referral to the Life Help Transitional Care Clinic, which is located outside, and that could be a one-stop shop for the, the client to actually come in instead of actually going back to the emergency room if they do need to see their doctor. All right now we're going to be discussing the frailty or assessing frailty. Obviously, frailty assessment provides objective information that allows the team to target interventions for chronically ill patients. We're gonna use what's called the 6MWT, or the six minute walk test. It's a practical measure of a patient's functionality and capacity, and is a key tool in assessing frailty. Now, this is a real easy thing to generate in Cerner. You're just gonna to go to select physician order, evaluate and treat. Now in the special instructions box, you're gonna change evaluate and treat to evaluate, treat, frailty, six minute WT. As you see right here, we just changed that to that. Okay, this is gonna allow them to get that test done by physical therapy. And then we're gonna take a look at the results, obviously, when it's done. I'm sure you guys know how to check your results. You're gonna go into the physical therapy documentation and go bring the drop down to physical therapy assessment and go to the date that it was actually completed on. I have a couple examples here of poor results or high levels of frailty. You don't really need to pay attention to the numbers in here. The most key thing that you need to pay attention to is what's at the very bottom. Here's an example of somebody that had low frailty. Now that person was obviously discharged home. Now we're gonna discuss upon discharge. We need to, this is the bottom portion of the COPD checklist. You need to inform the patient that they'll be receiving phone calls if they opt to, do, to participate in the ME program. They could receive a couple phone calls a day to quite a few more, but just let them know that they might be receiving phone calls from the hospital. It is important to review discharge medication lists for accuracy and make sure that the patient is, has those available to them. You need to make sure that the patient is unfunded, that all the items have been checked off and make sure they know that they can get 30 days of medication. And you need to, need to ensure the patient understands the COPD zone tool and that is sent with the patient at discharge. This is probably one of the most important tools for the patient because they can ask themselves the questions, am I doing well today? If they are, they need to look at actually what they're doing. Are they taking their medications? Are they using their oxygen? Okay, if they're not, if they're having a bad day, they need to actually look down and see what they can do to improve those items. And if they are in the red zone and they do need medical assistance, then they do need to get back in here as soon as possible. Hopefully with uh, this new program rolling out, we will be able to provide better healthcare and better education for our patients with COPD and reduce the amount or the reoccurrence of readmissions, helping them live a happier lifestyle. Thank you very much.